How are you all doing? Beautiful, great. Have you been cleaning all night, all evening, all morning? Dream time, too. Dream time, too, somebody said over here. That's fantastic. Uh, a little advisory warning. Uh, watch your step on the steps outside because a lot of it's rained, of course, it's slippy. And one of my mentors, Robin, has already fell and she hit her head and she's on her way to the hospital. She is fine. She may have to have a couple stitches, so I'm told. And, you know, we're just cleaning on all of this, but it's also a heads up. Just watch your step on the wetness that's out there, okay? Even the dryness. Even the dryness? She's so watch your step even on, well, this is actually wonderful. You know, you, you want to be mindful with every step you take, whether it is wet or it is dry. I mean, what a life lesson in itself. Just walk with mindfulness. There's, there's actually Buddhist meditators who do that. There's actually a whole form of meditation where they teach people to walk slowly. The old Kung Fu, remember David Carradine, the Kung Fu episode, walking very slowly. What, what did he walk on? Rice paper? Was it rice paper, Rick? Do you remember that? It was rice paper, paper, yes, he called me grasshopper, rice paper and walking so slowly, meditatively, that you're not ripping it. So that's probably a nice reminder for all of us as we go through this day is just to walk with that mindfulness, wet or dry. <laughs> yes. Something exciting is going on. You know, I mentioned that my Hollywood friends are here. Oh, and they are here. There they are. <laughs> And uh, I've been having many conversations with them. They're wonderful people. And despite my protests, they really want me to have my own television show. Yay! Yes. Oh, you're for that. <laughs> and I can't seem to be able to talk them out of it, no matter what I say. And we had this idea, they did actually last night, about inviting you to record on a DVD, on video, mini tape, whatever you want to call it, most likely on a DVD, a miracle or two or three, whatever is going on for you, that has already surfaced for you, that maybe have happened from reading my other book, Zero Limits, The Attractor Factor, Watching the Secret even, or of course from coming from this weekend. So what we want to do, and I'll write this down, is as these miracles occur in your life, we want you to tell the story. Tell the story of your miracle in the best way possible. Record it. Try to keep it under, did we say five minutes, three minutes? I don't remember what it was, but three minutes. Try to keep it under three minutes, I was just told. Keep it under three minutes, and then send it to P.O. Box 2048. I'm going to write it down. Go 2048 in Wimberley. And I'll move out of the way so you can see this in a second. So send it to P.O. Box 2048 in Wimberley, W-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-Y, Texas, T-X, 78676. And you might put up here Pedal Ranch Videos, which is the code word for Victoria, my partner, to get this. So again, keep it under three minutes. Tell your miracle. It could be one that's already occurred from the, the seminar from... Uh, my books, it could be one that's about to occur today or over the next few days, but whatever it is, three minutes on video, send it there, and you could be on the Joe Vitale television show. <laughs> it's going to be called something along the lines of uh, In Search of Miracles or Expecting Miracles, something like that, because I really do believe my mission in life is to inspire people to go for and achieve their miracles. And when we tell stories of people who, are, who have done it, it inspires others that they can do it too. So I'm very excited about it. Here's your opportunity to do it. Uh, so that's one announcement. Another one is Cindy over here says she's memorized a sonnet that is in zero limits. And she would like to, from memory, recite it to us. And we can take it as a kind of prayer, as a kind of meditation, as a kind of way of opening up this morning's experience. Would you come up here and do this? We need a mic. Who has the mic? Mike is coming for you. And you really do have this memorized? You don't need the book? No problem, she says. Just get out of the way, Joe. <laughs>
when to the sessions of sweet, silent thought I summon up remembrance of things past. I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes, new wails my dear times waste. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone and heavily from woe to woe, tell o'er the sad account of four bemoaned moan, which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. I love you. Whoa! <laughs> well done. I didn't see that. I got, I'm electrocuted. I got chills going up and down my body. That was fantastic. You are a storyteller by trade? Is that what you're doing? That's what I'm going to start doing. You're going to start doing? You just started. You have come out of the gate. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. Really fantastic. Before I have uh, Dr. Hulen come up here and do his song and dance, what kind of questions do you have? And I want to remind you that even though he's going to knock those questions back at you, I want you to feel comfortable in asking these questions. They are on your mind. I know they're on your mind because whenever I go to breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you come up and ask me questions. So here is your chance to ask your questions or to remind me of a question you asked me during a breakfast, lunch, or dinner that I can repeat that might be useful to somebody else. Who? Yes, right over here, Victoria. And the mic is a running. I just wanted to say, hello, aloha kakayaka kako akao to the room and to everybody this morning. And I love you and I thank you to my husband who was teaching upon how to speak the one language. But I wanted to ask a favor of you and Dr. Hulin, and since we're all such an important piece of each other, and to have the ability to recognize the divinity in each of us, to have us be able to stand up and just say the name that we choose and where we came from and let each of us look at each of us individually and say I love you and thank you for coming. Wow. And that hit me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Would you like to respond to that? Is that something you would like to do? Please be my guest. Be my, all right. Um, how do you see that happening? Just pass the mic around. Yeah, just have everybody stand up and turn and face us all and say my name, where they came from. Yes. Italy, Italy, yes. Italy, yes. Yeah. Australia. And Lisa has a response, of course. <laughs> <laughs> hand in hand one circle and each person goes around the circle while we hold hands wow uh, that's restructuring the room a little bit so I'm trying to go with the flow here uh -huh. yeah. I like how this is being adapted here so <laughs> Okay, we're not going to have to get up and go into a circle, but we can still hold hands and do this. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and do it. Let's start right there, since you're right beside him with a mic, and go ahead and stand up, do what she said, say who you are, where you're from, and we can respond with an I love you. My name is Steve Little. I'm from Gilroy, California. I love you. I love you. I love you. Wow. My name is Kimberly Little. I'm from Gilroy, California. I love you. Thank you. I love you. My name is Susan Vincent. I'm from Ventura, California. I love you. My name is Susan Claus. I'm from Overland Park, Kansas. I love you. My name is Stacy Oberzan. I'm from Overland Park, Kansas. I love you. 
My name is Carol Conklin. I'm from Lewis Center, Ohio, and I love you. Craig Prine, Austin, Texas, and I love you. Lisa Coltman, Wimberley, Texas, I love you. Ricky Masler, Los Angeles, California, thank you, I love you. Marilyn Levin, Austin, Texas, I love you. Cindy Smazel, Austin, Texas, I love you, thank you. Amy Harwood, Sonoma, California, Sonoma, California, thank you, I love you. Mike Velasquez, Chicago, Illinois, I love you. Bonnie Ebert, Naperville, Illinois, I love you. I love you. Suzanne Burns, Austin, Texas, I love you. Joyce McKee, McKinney, Texas, I love you. Aloha, Jorina Blance, Big Island, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey Wood, Big Island, I love you, thank you. Love you. Laura Vaughn, Hemet, California, I love you. Hi, my name is Vicki James, I'm from Sedona, Arizona. Aloha, I love you and thank you. Hi, my name is Barry Campbell, I love you, thank you. And I also witnessed uh, Robin fall which has made a big impact on me today. So I'm trying to clean on that. So thank you, and I love you. Louise Henderson, Perth, Western Australia. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Zion Chattel, Austin, Texas. I just want to take a moment, please. I love you. I love you. Oh. <laughs> I love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Thanks. Margo White Tree, Austin, Texas. I love you. I love you. Lee Follender, Austin, Texas. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Anya Hanson Wind, Austin, Texas. Thank you. I love you. Pam Pappas, Scottsdale, Arizona. Mahalo. I love you. <laughs> Lucinda Sykes from Toronto, Canada. I love you. Lucinda. Oh, I've said it. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am, uh, I am, and my name is Bruno, and I came from Brazil, and uh, it was well, says. I love you. Alana Trozinski from Brazil as well. I love you. Thank you. I love you. Oh, it's okay. Robin York from New Zealand. Aroha mai. Aroha kia koutou katoa. Reira tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā tātou katoa. Rose Clark from New Zealand. Thank you. I love you. Joanne Kylie Kea, Los Angeles. I love you. Kathleen Miller from Ohio, I love you. Thank you. Jim Miller from Ohio, I love you. Hello, uh, Michaela Zavara from Greece, I love you. Jeffrey, Greece, we love you. Young Wei Kuang from uh, Salem, Oregon, and Hong Kong. I love you. Thank you. I'm Phyllis Books, Austin, Texas. I love you. I'm Miles Saputo, Maui, Hawaii. I love you. 
Ramona from Maui, I love you. <laughs> Kathy Silcox from Utah, I love you. Beth McCody from Utah, thank you, I love you. Cynthia Jackson from Ohio, I love you. Good morning, Debbie from the Big Island Hawaii, I love you. Hi, my name is Joan B. Twin, San Francisco, California, I love you. Good morning, Viorica from Seattle and Romania, I love you. <laughs> I'm Dick from Seattle, thank you, I love you. Good morning, I'm Noelle from Seattle, and I love you. Jim Durlacher from Mesa, Arizona. Thank you, and I love you. Meryl Hershey Beck from Tucson, Arizona. Aloha, I love you. Karen Masula from Chico, California. I love you. I love you. Hera Tasher from New York City. <laughs> Donna Fuller from Sunnyside, Washington. Thank you, and I love you. I love you. Good morning. I'm Marilee from Cool, California. I love all of you. Dale Powers, Cool, California, I love you. I love you. Narissa Odin from Wimberley, Texas, aloha, thank you, and I love you. Mary Barrett from Sugarland, Texas, and I love you. I love you. Rick Barrett, Sugarland, Texas, aloha, I love you, thank you. I love you. Victoria Anakalea. Mahalo and aloha vau ia oi. I love you. Aloha ia oku. Mahalo no iki a la, no iki a no iki a ki a kua. Mahalo no iki a mukupuni o Maui o Hawaii ni. I welcome you all to Maui Hawaii with God's speed. Aloha. Mahalo ano i loa kaku. My name is Ramsey Kamaiki Anakalea from Waihee Maui. Mahalo, I love you. I love you. Linda Bryan from West Palm Beach, Florida. I love you. I love you. <laughs> My name is uh, Stefan, uh, also from uh, Florida. Uh, currently a uh, Florida resident, but originally from Montreal, Canada. I love you. I love you. Let me go around this one. Hi. Fran Horvath from Alabama. I love you. I love you. I am. Um, my name is Jimmy Playden Smith, Carmel, California. I love you. I love you. I'm Chris Frost. I'm from the Gold Coast, Australia. And I love you all and thank you. I love you. Hi, I'm Julie Muller. I'm from Houston, Texas. Thank you and I love you. I love you. Hi, I'm Louisa Alves from Toronto, Canada. Thank you, and I love you. I love you. Hi, my name is Catherine Yost. I'm from Houston, Texas. I love you. Hawaii. I love you. Good morning. My name is George Spiker, Houston, Texas, and I love you. Thank you. I love you. Gail Scott from Dayton, Ohio. I love you. I love you. Amy Rodriguez from Miami, Florida. Namaste and bendiciones, blessings to all of you. And I love you. I love you. Emma, aloha, um, from Mexico. Gracias, I love you. I love you. I'm sorry, I don't speak English. My name is Nietzsche from Brazil. Eu amo todos. I 
Sherry Wilson from Pine, Colorado. I love you. Elkie Lewis from Seattle. I love you. Thank you. Monique Paulin from Sammamish, Washington. I love you. Thank you. Minette Boykin from Concord, California. I love you. Patricia Ogilvie from Edmonton, Canada. Thank you very, very much. And I do love you. Marcia from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I love you. Eu amo vocês. Thank you. Muito obrigado. I am Wynne Eberhard, and I love you. And I'm from Wembley, Texas. <laughs> I'm Brian Everhard. I love y'all. Wimberley, Texas. <laughs> I'm Ricardo Moreno from New York. Thank you. I love you. Carrie Blackett from Rapid City, South Dakota, and I love you. I love you. Kiora, Ellen Edelman, Christchurch, New Zealand. I love you. Marianne Edelman, Christchurch, South Island, New Zealand. I love you. Thank you. Tim Selden, Sarasota, Florida. Thank you all. I love you. Joyce St. Germain, Sarasota, Florida. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Alice Wright from Windermere, Florida. I love you all very much. Thank you. Robert Kaiser from Orlando, Florida. I love you all very much. Uh, Steve Freed from Maui Waui. I love you. <laughs> My name is Anand from Italy. Vi amo. Grazie. I am G from Italy. I love you. Ti amo. Namaste to everybody. Richard McIntyre from Maui, I love you. Joss McSpeed from Maui, Hawaii, I love you. Hi, um, Jennifer Easterly and Lila Easterly from Kauai, Hawaii, I love you and thank you. <laughs> Mark Ryan from Drippin Springs, Texas, I love you. Hi, Tom Shell, Los Angeles, California. I love you all. I love you. Thank you. A miracle. I can stand. I'm Rain. <laughs> I'm Rain, and yesterday Robin and I found out that we're both from Austin, Texas, and that I'm a rabbi, and that my synagogue isn't open. Well, this morning Hashem's house is open. While I ask in all of our names, a Mishabeirach for Robin, as Moses said to God when Miriam was sick, please heal her. I love all of you beyond my wildest dreams. I love you. Uh, my name is Jason Willison from Perth in Western Australia. Mahalo and I love you all. I love you, thank you. Lorraine Purcell from the Big Island of Hawaii. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bruce Burns from Austin, Texas. I love you. I'm Joe. <laughs> Wimberley, Texas. I love you. What a great group. Happy, smiling faces. This morning when I looked at my blog, somebody had posted a comment that said they were very skeptical about Zero Limits, the book, and saying something as simple as, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. But they were laying in bed, and there was a lot of noise going outside, and they apparently were in an apartment, and it was very noisy outside with a party going on and so forth, and they decided they would just try it. And so they laid in bed saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and so forth, and they said almost instantly, the party stopped. The noise stopped, and she went to bed, and she went to sleep. I say she. I don't know if it was a she or he. 
I wanted to point out, first, the simplicity of this, and then second, something I think is very important. You're not doing the cleaning to get something. You're doing the cleaning to clean. You're not doing the cleaning to get a particular result. Because if you're trying to get a particular result, you're still in the world of the data, of the ego, of, uh, of intention, of trying to control everything from your little itsy bitsy conscious mind. What you're trying to do is erase, constantly erasing, constantly erasing, so that what you do receive is inspiration. Then when the inspiration comes, there's a purity to that, that is coming from zero, that is coming from the divine, and that's what you step into. I keep referring back to this TV show thing, and I want you to realize that I'm not making it happen. I am not trying. I am cleaning. And as I'm cleaning, things happen. But I'm not trying to make them happen. Somebody asked me yesterday about all the things that I do, that I'm an incredibly prolific writer. I'm pretty much the book of the month club now. Almost every month I have a new book coming out. There's probably more books coming out than most people have read since high school. You know, and they can't keep up with it. And I have people who are fans of mine who are on my mailing list who try to keep up, who complain, you write too much. I can't buy all of your books. I can't read all of your books. I can't read all of your blog posts. And they think that I'm just doing a whole lot of effort. <clears throat> I'm doing a whole lot of struggle. But what's really happening is it's play. It's an effortless activity. And this is what happens when you come from inspiration. When you just keep cleaning and the divine says something like, write this book, Joe, or whatever it happens to be, it's easy for me to do it. Now, when you look at me doing it, it may seem like intense effort because you're trying to imagine what it would be like for you to do it. But when I do it, it's natural for me. It's much like you with your sonnet over there. I don't want to have to go and memorize it. I don't want to have to go and perform it. That's not my inspiration. It might be at one day. It might be at one point as I keep cleaning. <coughs> as I keep cleaning, I might wake up one day and I'll have the inspiration to go pull something out of one of my favorite books and to memorize it and to actually turn it into a the theatrical uh, experience. But until that happens, it'll feel like work to me because it won't be natural. So I just keep cleaning, keep cleaning, keep cleaning. And the person who posted on my blog, it's wonderful that the noise <coughs> stopped. But maybe it wasn't even related. Maybe the noise was going to stop anyway. The cleaning was to be done so he or she would be OK with the moment. And out of that moment, he or she may have been inspired to do something else. Like because of the noise, get up and write a poetry, or to work out a business plan, or to go for a walk, or a run. I don't know. It could have been any number of things. So you're cleaning to clean. And this was one of the hardest things for me to accept when he first told it to me, because he kept saying, my, old, my only duty here, my only job on earth is to clean. When he's at the hospital, the mental hospital there, he said, I'm just there to clean. When he left there, I'm just here to clean. When he comes up here, and believe me, we didn't talk before this. I hadn't seen him since the last seminar. We haven't spoken on the phone. We just show up. Our agreement was, you know, it starts at 10 o'clock. I'll see you at 945. We just keep cleaning, and that's what he's doing. He just keeps cleaning. I am just keeping the cleaning. And as a result of it, don't you feel like there's real <coughs> magic happening? And a real miracle happening? And that cleansing is happening in this room? When I look across and I see all of your faces, you are incredibly attentive. And your eyes are wide open and bright and your energy fills your auras and so forth. Every single one of you just have this radiating out. There is something powerful going on here. But all we're doing is cleaning. That's all we're doing. Dr. Who Lenton? No, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> But I bet you think of something. Come on up here. It's your turn. I've erased the board. Do you have anything you want to ask Joe? Yeah. She has a question. Yes. Right here, Bruce. So I have a question. I just wanted to get like a little bit more information about the uh, relationship that Dr. Yulin was talking about with the mother and the child. You know, I did that whole... Um, 
conscious and subconscious because it's all happening in the subconscious where we really want it to be erasing from. So just like to go over that again, you know, just how you mm -hmm. speak to the, you know, just that whole thing. That's your department. That's your department. No, 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 I'm, I'm passing the buck. Okay. <laughs> He's got it. Well, we have, we, we really need to begin at the beginning. You just have to start somewhere and the reference point is always zero. Always zero. Now, why should that be so? Well, at zero, there's nothing going on. Silence, no bitching, no moaning, no groaning, no efforting. Zero. And this zero state is, is the way it all began. So, you can only be two ways at any given moment. Only two ways. And I want to I want to I want to emphasize you are always present. Okay. So this is zero, this is zero, and what happens is at the beginning. Let me tell you the Hawaiian version of Adam and Eve. You know? I know there's a Jewish version, a Christian version, but let me tell you the Hawaiian version of Adam and Eve. So, you've been decided for whatever reason, and I have no idea why decided to make Adam. And so out of the void, divinity showed up as light. Divinity says, I'm going to replicate this guy in my image. And if you, you know the different stories of different cultures, divinity picked up some clay and <laughs> spit on it. <laughs> rolled it, rolled it. I'm going to tell you our version of it. So now divinity comes from the void into light. And for whatever reason, decided to make Joe, my friend, Aowakua. We don't know why. And then, and then our friend decided to, our friend decided to make our, let's say, Marisa. Adam and Eve. <laughs> now I want you to make, I want you to note something. They're perfect. Perfect. Zero, 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 zero. Perfect. That's the way God is. Perfect. So when you do the Ho'oponopono, it's not about you. It's not trying to improve you. You're perfect already. So the story is, and it's really a story. A lot of it is, but it's a story. So the story is, the divinity says, hello, you can have everything in paradise except there's this little banana tree. <laughs> <laughs> and on this banana tree, there are these sacred fruits. No, no. No, no. So Adam heard, no, no. Mm -hmm. Theresa, Marisa heard, no, no. But something came up, and we, I don't want to go into that, but something came up in which garbage showed up. <laughs> now, I'm going to show the garbage both ends now. The garbage showed up. It's called, Hawaiians call it space stuff. Really, space stuff showed up on the earth. But I'm going to just make, make up the story. So my friend Eve says to Adam, hmm, you know, uh, this this guy, this person here is saying don't eat that because if we ate it, we would be just like that person. So, so Fred Eve here is doing a number on Adam, <laughs> saying, hello, eat that. If you eat that, you can be like God. And Eve did it for millions and millions of years, just got on his case. Eat it, eat it. No. Eat it, eat it. Now you're getting old. No, no, no. Keeps, keep, keeps on his case, but what, what, you don't, what the stories don't tell you is that they're both responsible. In other words, Eve is saying to him, eat it. But you see, the only reason why is it's already in him to eat it. No. So now he eats it. Boom, boom, I mean, the hell breaks loose. I mean, snow and rockets and, oh, God knows, everything goes up in the hell. So now we're stuck. 
No, this is the Los Angeles version of God coming into the situation. Watch me. <laughs> this, this is God swishing his co his his whatever pajamas, you know. And then the Los Angeles version is, hmm, there's been a change in the energy. Here. <laughs> And here's what Adam said. Adam said, she made me do it. <laughs> yeah. So, so women have been pissed off at us. <laughs> yeah. You know how they get pissed off, right? They withhold. Yeah. So the idea is, if Adam had been 100% responsible, none of us would be here today. I want to let you know that. No, no, would it? Now, Adam could have said to the divinity, what? What could Adam have said to the divinity? I love you. So as soon as he said that, the energy would go down, go up, ding, 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 ding. Then now you have the, you have the mana coming down, comes down, immediately comes down to Eve, comes down, comes down, comes down, comes down, comes down, comes down, and divinity transforms. Erases, 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 cuts the ties, what the Hawaiians call aka. Just get the cut, oki the aka. Now they're, now they're free. But you see, our parents goofed. And our parents, being Adam and Eve, didn't get it, so you and I have to work on it. That's our story. That you and I are left with, she made me do it. Really? So now we're stuck, but you're going to help unstuck us. And all you have to do is say, I love you, thank you, drink your soul of water, do any of this stuff, and not only will you get set free, so something you all didn't do in this room. Now, how many people are in this room? Just estimate. No, there, there are billions of people in the room. Billions. Billions, family, relatives, and ancestors. So when you go, eh, they go, eh, too. <laughs> really. So I want you to know that when you say, I love you, you free up everybody and everything. If you, if you become blameful, she made me do it, we're all stuck. So the idea is, this is why therapists get burned, is because behind Eve is all the family relatives and ancestors back to the beginning of creation. So in this room, there are billions of life forms. <clears throat> Let me give you a story that somebody asked more than a question. This was at the University of Hawaii. So let's say my friend asked Morna this question. Morna, blah, 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 blah. And her response is like this. Did you know that you were once a seaweed? <laughs> I, I mean, so, listen, you got it easy with me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, in, I was in Arizona with her, with Morna, dear Morna. Um, we were doing a class at St. Elizabeth, a uh, 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 Catholic hospital. So I was, I was up, and she was in the back. And Morna always meditates. There isn't a moment she doesn't meditate. But she's got her eyes closed and head down. So she's sitting there, and I'm talking, and, and you can see the room go. I mean, all of a sudden, then they go that way. Well, that's the way she meditates. I mean, she leans forward, she leans backward. I mean, it's going. And when I'm talking, I get used to it. But you watch. Everybody's just kind of bending and watching. You know? <laughs> like that. So. Somebody like him, my friend Dick, asked a question. He asked a question of me, and I said, I don't know. Let's ask Morna. I turned around. I said to Morna, Morna was like this. I said, Morna, I don't know how to answer that, answer that question. Up comes her head instantly, and she said, it's a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> and back she goes. She leaves me standing. I'm there, you know. Okay. So you got it easy. Yeah. 
So the story is very simple. The story is very simple. Only divinity can transmute. No, there's no being walking the earth. Only this part of you can transmute. If you say you're a healer, the whole universe laughs. Yeah, only that in you. It's like my friend Oakua is talking. If he's willing to clean, that in him will inspire him. Because that in him created him. And if you don't, you don't get that, you'll be forever stuck. But this part of you, the this transmute, inspires, create. But this part of you, is a, now I'm coming to the mother aspect of mine. This part of you has the choice. As Shakespeare said, I don't know what, in what play, Shakespeare said, the question is to be or not to be free. And you're only here to make that choice moment by moment to be free. And most of us aren't, are not aware that there are stuff going on in here for which we are not aware of. This is the relationship is 15 conscious, 15 million, you're not aware of. And you talk like you do. So if you're willing to allow the divinity to do its work, and it can't do its work unless you're willing to petition, it won't do it because it's an invasion. So the idea is now the mother is so important. We can forget this part of you. I'm coming down to the mother and child now coming down to the mother and child. So for eons, the mother has been holding on. The mother has been engaged. That's the way we solve problems. We engage the data. The Ho'oponopono is about disengagement. The disengage. Disengage from what? The, the data in the subconscious. So now the mother has to be willing to, when the mother does the cleaning like, I love you, the mother has to take the time and say to the child, listen, we're suffering. Or you're, you're self-talking. We're suffering. I love you is a way to let go of the suffering. So I'm asking you, you're talking mentally now, I'm asking you and giving you permission, let go. Because you can say, I love you, and it won't work because you've been holding on for eons, and you have to be willing to talk to this child. And this child runs your body. It runs your body. If this is hell, your body is a consequence. This is, if your body is always effect, your body will be in hell. So the idea is that the relationship between the mother and child is the absolutely the most important relationship in creation. So as you do, I love you, and any of these processes, you need to talk to the child and say, here's what this is all about, because this part of you has no discretion. The subconscious has no discretion. It doesn't know right from wrong. When something, when the data gets hit, it'll play it. But now you have to begin the process of what I'm going to call re-education. You have to re-educate the child. But every time you do the cleaning, you have to talk to it. Here's how it works. Here's how it works. Uh, we've learned a process called... Hawaii. And here's how the process, and you talking and you talk. And at some point, if you're willing to do it consistently, you're a disciple of yourself, the child will do it automatically while you're sleeping. But it will not do it if you're inconsistent. So I'm going to pause to see if you have any questions that I can hear. Now the reason I'm telling you this is that only cleaning can trump intellectualism, which is thinking. Once you leave this room, if you go into thinking, you'll get, you're going to sink. Thinking is this data plane. So you can ask questions in this room, but if you get in the habit of asking, asking, it will take you nowhere. So while in this room, I suspect if you have any unclarity on my part, I'm willing to clean it up. Yes? No, we need, we need a mic. When you say it's in me, when you uh, say what? When when you say that the the uh, divine, conscious, unconscious is all within me, I only relate to mentally and within my body. 
Is it outside of me in any way or? What is outside of you in any way? My confusion is what, what is, I don't understand. The confusion is data plane, you can erase it. That's what I'm saying to you. If you're outside with this confusion, you will confuse everything. So the idea is you don't know, as Joel has been mentioning, oh, we don't know what's going on, but we can get back to zero. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No, you're not satisfied. Don't let her sit down. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's a party behind. Now you're now your two feet went into the concrete. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which means the rest of us, our two feet, are caught in the concrete. Which means, you know what gangsters do to people? They put them in concrete and jump them overboard. <laughs> really? All right, you guys. Yeah, but I can see her. <laughs> By the way, that's why you have back pain. You know that? You have back pain, watch me. Watch me. So she says something and I go, <clears throat> So immediately I, I squash my family relatives and ancestors. <laughs> yeah. This, your back, your whole back and your, your spine represent, these are, this is your family tree. So every time you go into, like, battle, this thing gets squooshed. You get squooshed. And that's what some of you, you have severe back problems, some of you. I watch you. And so I get to clean with it. But yes, ma'am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See, I'm only trying to get you to realize when you leave this room and you get stuck in question, too bad, you're going you're gonna to go and you're going to be gone. So I'm willing to ask one, but I need to, for you to know you can trump it with the cleaning. Trump it. Yeah. Okay, so what, what I'm hearing you saying is it doesn't really matter whether it's inside, outside, whatever. It's there just is to no clean. There is no outside. There is no outside. There is no outside. You always see from, that's like in Hamlet. Hamlet says, you can't, I cannot know him unless I know myself. I can't. That's why I never do therapy. So now, as I watch you, I'm seeing you from the inside, looking at you. I'm looking at you either as God sees you or, or as memory sees you. I can't see you otherwise. Not possible. So it always comes from the inside, never outside. There's no such thing as outside to the mind. No such thing. No such thing. There's nothing out there. Nothing. It's all data. And if you don't get that, you're going to be stuck in the data. There's nothing out there. So it's like a good friend of mine, Mary Curler, said, you know, I, I realized finally that I, I really strapped my husband. She's talking. Because no matter what he did, he couldn't get out of it. I had to let him go. Well, I said, yeah, kind of like Adam and Eve, you know. Yeah. So your thoughts strap people, but your thoughts come with them. Yeah, that means you're strapped. Oh, how, I mean, how incredible it you would strap yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. I, I do. I, I, I like to, I, I'm analytical, <laughs> but I'm also you controlling. It. You've heard the great sage says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and you can't help it. Ah, but I know. Yeah, but the rest of us are listening. I'm hoping they're saying, I love you, I love you, <laughs> I love you. But you see... It's more than an exercise. It's a, it's a way of living. So as you're talking, we're hoping these people are cleaning. Some I of them so are going, too. what's your problem? <laughs> yeah. so I heard it from this side. What's your problem? I mean, you guys want to get, keep getting stuck in yeah, cement? Right. Then I mean, start cleaning. I mean, I mean, where is the I love you? Yeah. What happened to I love you? You know? Come on. <laughs> Last time I cleaned for you. <laughs> all right. It's because it's all bullshit. Yeah. Okay. This, this, is, this is Eve getting even. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Remember, I love you really works. Hello, he's got his hand up over there. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> yeah, as you were talking, I heard, the, I heard family relatives and answers going, ditto. I love ditto. I go, wow, I can say ditto too. Ditto. ditto. Yeah. yeah.
Go ahead. I love you. I love you too. Thank you. And um, I love you works as long in the beginning as long as we talk to the child and say, this is the program, this is what we do, we let go. Something like that? Yeah, and, and it, it's interesting because it works for a lot of people and some people it doesn't work for. So you have to stop and say, okay, I'm sorry that I got you to hold on. So you're actually saying to the child, I caused you to hold on. And so now, you don't mind, can you let go? Go, let go. And so you have to re-educate the child, it's okay to let go. But if you're persistent, it'll let go. Because it, it doesn't want to suffer. Yeah. Isn't that the responsibility of the mama? To not make the child suffer. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. You know, it just sounds really delicious to have that conversation with oh, the child. It's very delicious. It's very delicious. Burger, I mean, burger oh. cake stuff, yeah. Yeah. And. I notice that I can uh, be in a very blissful place, like I was when I left here yesterday, get yep. together with someone who is intimate, yeah. and in about three seconds, yeah. be in shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah uh, I love you outside there. You know? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just like, <laughs> you know. Not only that, if you say I love you until some stranger, they go. <laughs> right, Exa ex exactly. Yeah. So, go, uh, being kind of intimate, you know. Yeah. So I, this is just a takeoff on the same question I had yesterday, but so in the midst of being triggered and angry and everything else that's swirling, just keep doing the mantra? Well, I, mean, I, I would train the child to do it for you. So yeah. the child will do, will do the cleaning. I love you, I love you, I love you. Because when you show up without cleaning, that's your problem. You show up without cleaning. <laughs> And you, we pick up the telephone without cleaning. We, we, we listen to the cell phone, and some of you who are, are cell phone users, you are going to have hearing problems. You're going to have problems neurological, but you're going to have it. But you can prevent it by doing this cleaning. But, but the way to do it is to teach the child how to do it. So you don't have to, the mother has to go, oh, I'm getting tired of saying I love you. You'll get tired, you know. After you do 15 million of them? <laughs> no, yeah. So teach the child to do it like you do on the computer. You program it, talk to it very gently, lovingly, and it'll do it for you. It will fall in love with you. So, yeah. You know, because in one form or another, I've been doing this for a long time, and it's just, it's just endlessly frustrating that this, you know, I, I come from a very blissful place and can get triggered in three yeah. seconds, you know, yeah. so just keep yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah. But the idea the key now is for you to be able to work with that child and to teach it it's okay to let go. Because for millions and millions and millions of eons you have not done that. You have been holding on. And you can't help it. But you have to say to the child now, you, it's okay to let go. And it won't let go unless you give it permission. Yep, thank you. Anybody else? Before we have a coffee break. Yeah. <laughs> Children, I, I, my kid loves coffee breaks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> See what happens now. I got. Have you ever watched? Uh, have you ever watched? Hockey? Yeah. You know how the, the goaltender is what? What is the goaltender? I mean, he's got shields on him like nobody's business. That's what. That's what I have for me. Yeah. I mean, really. You do this kind of work without shielding. It's crazy. Yes. I just want to share something. Um, I started doing this work with Huna several years ago and addressing the mother-child issue. And <clears throat> what I realized is I started catching myself betraying the child by negative self-talk. And as long as you're betraying the child, the child can't trust you. So you keep sabotaging it. So the secret is, is to start maybe paying attention and being can, aware. Can we just slow down a little bit. The child does not do that. It's the data that does it. The you data. Have, yeah, you have to be really, see clarity is very, very important. So the child is not doing it. It's the data doing it to the child and the child echoes it in your body. <clears throat> okay. You gotta get this. The child is fine. It's the data. Yeah. So it's the data that kills. It's the data that rapes. 
It's the day that they hate, not the child. Listen, the child was born free. You ever heard the song, born free? I mean, really, as you were born as free. The and then somewhere along the line, you picked up garbage. Yeah. So Go do ahead. you feel like the child that believes everything that you tell it? No, it doesn't believe anything. It follows the data. Okay, so... Yeah. So all you have to do is get rid of the data. Listen. So if you're talking negatively to yourself, your no, child's no, no, not no, hearing... No, 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 the data is talking negatively to you. Okay. So Got now it. if you work, get rid of the data, you'll be fine. Okay. Thanks. It's only data, you all, from Texas, y'all. Only data. And on that note, we'll take a break.